What was weird? Yeah, it's because the computer and the camera are very old and broken. Uh, can it hear you? I hope not. Oh my God, can we start over? Uh, okay, cut. I'll, I'll fix this in post, okay? <laughs> All right, so hey everybody, welcome back to uh, youtube.com slash mrbrog.net. Remember, you spell out the D-O-T for savings. Uh, we're here with um, what's left of my first period after standardized testing has gotten half the uh, class. It's like the Black Plague up in here. Hey! Um, so today we're going to talk about Japan and uh, how it got all opened up and Americanized. Uh, and at the end of this, we'll probably end with Godzilla. Uh, that's probably where we're heading. Uh, so uh, I have a really super awesome, fun PowerPoint to share with you guys, and um, then we will uh, uh, then we'll move forward. Um, uh, if you guys have questions, stop me and uh, ask them. Uh, and remind me that I need to stay close to the computer because if I'm all the way over here, it's very hard for the people on the YouTube to hear me. So I'll try to stay closer to the computer. Um, oh, it's broken. Hold on. Excuse me, broken computer. I'm trying to refix you. Is this how YouTube works? Am I basically Kim Kardashian? Oh, I want to be Chloe. <laughs> One of them ate their placenta. Uh, that was corny. Or they all actually ate their placenta. Mmm, smoothie they time. Mmm, it tastes what? like meat. Um, uh, they thought it was good. Would they like put it in eggs, like scrambled eggs? I don't know. That's no, they put like a roast. Oh, like a pot roast of my placenta. <laughs> oh, you guys. Okay. So, Japan. Japan, as usual, has been locked door, shut door policy, right? They don't mess with anybody. Uh, remember, at some point, the Dutch showed up and started converting people to Christianity. And uh, what that ended up doing was making the emperor mad because uh, all the new Christians started burning down Shinto shrines. Do you guys remember that? It was like back in the 1600s. Um, but we know Japan is a is a world player in Unit Six. Would you agree with that? Not a player like uh, Migos, uh, but more like uh, uh, like Offset. Offset would be a player today, um, but a player as in like getting things done. He's trying really hard to beat it. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Japan is forced by the United States. And these are Strayer's words, not mine. So say Strayer, so say us all. To become powerful, modern, united, and industrialized. Because the truth is, it's none of those before America shows up. Okay? It's completely different from Qing China and the Ottoman Empire which are basically going to disintegrate in um, the end of Unit 5, beginning of Unit 6. Japan, these two are going to implode. Japan is going to explode. Japan is going to take Pearl Harbor, right? They're going to become super strong. They're even going to take land from their brother their big brother, China. Um, China is going to lose a war to Japan. It's called the Sino-Japanese War. Sino means Chinese. Uh, remember the rape of Nanjing that we talked about at the beginning of the chapter? Oh, they all shook their heads yes. Um, that's going to be a ramification of the Sino-Japanese War that happens during World War II. A lot of people do not realize that China and Japan are at war with one another in World War II. Legit at war with one another. Okay. Um, I realize this might be hard for you guys to see um, uh, back there. Can you guys can you read this? You can't. Okay. Um, so. Uh, 
Um, this is key moments in the rise of Japan. Um, and basically, it's they're very ununified. Um, we get the Tokugawa shogunate in the 1600s, but it's kind of disintegrated out and isn't really a thing. Uh, there's still shoguns all over the place. There's an emperor, but remember he's an emperor. You guys agree with that? Um, and so um, we're going to have, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to come back to this uh, because I need to tell you the story before I tell you this table. Okay, I'll use this table repeat. Because I just realized I'm going to spoil the story. Question. What should we write about this? Um, so I'm going to explain that table at the end. Um, it just kind of reviews the story is what it does. Okay. Um, from 1600, the Tokugawa Shogunate, I would definitely write Tokugawa Unites right here. Um, um, the shogun is going to act in the name of the emperor. And the shogun's name is Tokugawa Ieyasu, which you should have remembered. He's the guy that unites China. Okay? Uh, and uh, he wants to make sure that the samurais don't break back into warring states. Remember, guys, does everybody remember the Japanese dynasty song? Warring states, warring states, warring states. Emperor sort of warring states. Warring states, warring states. Emperor sort of warring states. Tokugawa shogunate. And then kind of warring states again. Here comes America. <laughs> oh, crap. Look out. All right. So that's the Japanese dynasty song. It's completely the opposite of the Chinese dynasty song where everything is... Dynasty, dynasty, dynasty. Okay? Um, and so, 1600 is Tokugawa. 1850 is, a, 1850 is a little thing I like to call America. We're going to bring some freedom. Hey, Japan, are you all out of freedom? Would you like to borrow some of ours? That's the freedom eagle. Kaka, C A C A W. No. Tokugawa? No. <coughs> Meiji? No. M I J I? I haven't said it. No. Tokugawa Ieyasu? Yeah, I haven't said that. E Y A S U? E Y E S U. E Y E S U. Ieyasu is his first name, though. Here's all you need to know from him is you need to know Tokugawa for him just like you need to know Washington for George Washington. You don't have to know George, because they're backwards, or we're backwards, right? Okay. Um, out from this, definitely highlight the hostage system. Uh, Japan's doing things kind of interestingly. Uh, basically, Tokugawa is running Japan, uh, and he makes all the daimyos come to the capital, Edo. Ito's going to change its name to Tokyo, um, and um, they're going to make, if you are a daimyo, which is basically a senator, your family has got to live in the capital, okay? And you have to spend one year in the capital with your family, and then one year in your home region. And so the reason they call it the hostage system is it's, it's like they're keeping your family hostage. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, and it's so they know that you'll come back to the capital. And it's actually a sort of effective way uh, to keep these daimyos from getting too much power. We don't want the daimyos having too much power because when that happens, they start hiring their own samurai and we break back into warring states. Um, and so what this does, it's, it keeps them pacified, not really unified. Um, and this is like a very strict, calm time in Japan. Okay?
So, do you remember how um, over in the Ottoman Empire, oh, by the way, these are called, um, they're salary militaries, like the Janissary. They call them salaried samurais. And there's no wars to fight. Tokugawa is going to unite all of uh, Japan. And when he unites all of Japan, the samurais are not going out to war. So they end up being bureaucrats. And this is a really good comparison here, just like the scholar gentry in China. Okay. We start to see little tastes of the Industrial Revolution in 1750 with new fertilizers, new strands of rice. And in 1750, guys, this is so important, the largest city in the world is not Paris. It's not, it's not France. It's not your mother's underpants. In fact, it's Edo. The largest city in the world is Edo. A million people. Okay? A million people. 1750. Now, the reason 1750 is important is because that's when the Industrial Revolution starts. We're going to see other cities skyrocket when the Industrial Revolution takes off. Um, Confucianism is what the CONF is. Confucianism and the importance, the importance of learning, respect, are going to lead to um, a very literate population. And literacy leads to innovation. The more literate you are, the more innovative you are. Most people in America know how to read, therefore we get innovation, such as the masked singer. I love that. Of course you love the masked singer. Alexa, you don't know about it? It's the best show ever. If it's not on Netflix, oh wow, you need a t-shirt that says that. It's not on Netflix. I don't watch it, girl. Mm. I watched it in the car. Ah. Grey's Anatomy. There we go. All right. Some samurais uh, become uh, merchants and get rich. But remember, guys, merchants equal evil in East Asia. East Asia being China, Korea. Um, Japan. Okay. Because, remember, it's the flea market mentality that they're just trying to rip you off. And they're getting rich off the work of somebody else. Merchants are not seen as good people. Okay. Um, we do see some peasants getting rich. Um, but the end result, by the time uh, we get to the 1800s, is famine. And the shogunate, the rule of the shogun, is now dangerously. The rule of the shogun looks like it's going to fall. Remember, the shogun is the fake emperor who has power. And then the emperor is the real emperor who has no power. Do you guys agree with that? 
Um, so here comes America, baby. Got to bring a little freedom to Japan. Looks like they're starving to death. So we got to bring them the red, white, and blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fireworks, too. Okay. All right. I need, uh, I need someone to be uh, the Maji Emperor. Who would that like to be? Oh, Amy, okay. You're going to be on the thing. Okay. Got it? You have your makeup on? Okay. Oh, so uh, it's probably going to be wrong. Let me see if we got this right. You should be nervous. Everybody else just watch. I'm sure everybody signed the proper paperwork, right? <laughs> okay, get that off. Get a little a little blush at least, man. Your <laughs> cheeks are kind of not rosy enough. Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. So, um, and also, let's see who's in the thing. Uh, Taylor, would you like to be Miller Fillmore? Okay. All right. So, Taylor, you're the president of the United States, Miller Fillmore. You have, uh, you're going to write this declaration uh, to, uh, to the emperor. Uh, and it's just open up. Uh, so write on there, open up. Open up. Uh, and also be nice. And be nice. Be nice. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to give that letter to your favorite Commodore, Matthew Perry, who is me. And you're going to say, take this to Japan, fam. So, uh, I'm Matthew Perry. Uh, all right. Now, here's what happened. We had some shipwrecked sailors that Japan has been keeping as prisoners of war. And also, we're seeing all the money that England is making off of China and uh, 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 India. And we like, oh, there's a little China we can grab. We can grab Japan. So, I get on my ship. And I take the letter to the Meiji uh, Emperor. Okay? Now, what do you think the Emperor should do? Emperor should do what? Emperor should do my belly. <laughs> uh, do you think the Emperor should say okay? No one. The Emperor's going to do this. He's going to wad up the paper, and he's going to throw it right in the face of Commodore Matthew Perry. Right here. All right. Oh, I'm so disrespected. So, now I bring, I bring the wadded up paper back to Mueller Fillmore, and I say, can you believe this? We're freaking America here. We're freaking America. It's the 1830s. We're rolling, man. What do you think we should do, Miller Fillmore? And what do you say? Of course, Miller Fillmore says, get so many ships, battleships, and take them to Edo Bay. And like park them in Edo Bay and take this water wadded up letter with you and give it back to this jerk wad and tell him he's opening it up. And so we get the ships. Hello? Oh, hello, Emperor. Remember me? Old paper face? Here's this paperback. Here are all these awesome ships that are going to blow your face off your head. <laughs> you think you should open up and be nice, Emperor Meiji? You're thinking, I'm, if I'm going to blow up your head, then what? Okay, shake on it. There we go. Now, what I've just done, not only have I opened up Japan and I've made Japan be nice, I've also, see, the, do you know that the emperor doesn't have much power? Do we agree with that? But I just made this deal with the emperor that doesn't have much power. So what I do is I turn my ships towards the daimyos. And the shoguns, and I say, guess who's in power now? My little dude here. This is my guy. He's the emperor. And so what we do is we put the emperor 
back in charge. And we saw how China got owned by England, and they're going to agree to these treaties, these unequal treaties. There's going to be some civil wars, but what ends up happening in the end, as far as we're concerned, is the Emperor Meiji is going to take over. It's going to be called the Meiji Restoration. And here's why. The U.S. restores power to the throne. Now, funny ha-ha time. All the power that we give the emperor right here in 1830, uh, there's going to be a very powerful emperor in about 1930, thanks to us giving them power, who's going to drop some bombs on Pearl Harbor. <laughs> All right, but that's another story for another day. Okay, but at this point, um, the Meiji Restoration, these young followers for this young emperor, they're going to do this. And this might be the most important thing about the Meiji Restoration, even though we did a whole play with throwing paper wads at each other. The most important thing is probably that they're going to become industrial, they're going to become modern, and they're going to become imperial. Hey, Mr. Rock, what's imperial again? Easy. Imperial is Star Wars. It's I'm taking over somebody else's country. I'm taking over somebody else's planet. Okay? And so Japan is going to end up becoming imperial. All right? After the AP exam, yes, we can just watch Star Wars. Yes. So I'm assuming that's why they're kind of in that picture probably of China. Japan, yeah, Japan is sitting there watching, wanting to get a piece. Yeah, you're right. Um, and so check this out. Um, here is my little Japanese guy. He's got, he's holding his, uh, he's got all sorts of books. He's a little nerdy dude. He's got glasses on. All right. He's really thin. Um, that's, that's Japan. And he's in the locker room, right? And then in comes like America, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, with his big muscles. All right, and he's mad. He's like, all right, all right. And so that was America, right? And America's like, hey, you little pipsqueak. You look like a little turd. I don't like you. I'm going to flush you down the toilet. But I want to help. Okay? And here's how I'm going to help. I have this thing here. Let me see if I can draw this right. It's called steroids. All right? And this steroid, of course, <laughs> is industrialization. Okay? Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Japan guy, you're weak and scared and nervous, but let me just take this and put it in your neck here. Alright, now, he's got the steroids of industrialization due to the Meiji restoration, right? And the next thing you know, you have Big Japan Man. And he um, is going to go and take over China and some islands and Russia. And see, this guy becomes this guy. And then here's Hawaii. <laughs> that, I'm sorry. If that offended you, I'm very sorry. I love America and Japan. Hmm? Oh, and then, uh, so, of course, World War II, World War II, World War II, and then, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know that, like, uh, we dropped nuclear bombs, right, by the way, it's nuclear, not nuclear, never say nuclear, 
We dropped nuclear bombs on Japan, right? You know that's why Godzilla became a thing, right? Godzilla was just this little lizard, and then the nuclear bombs, like, radiated her. It's a her, right? Isn't Godzilla a girl? I think Godzilla's a girl. Write that down. And, um, and, uh, and then, like, she just terrorizes everywhere. And then she comes back to San Francisco. Um, so, I think I'm an artist now. Mr. Scout would be proud. <laughs> I like Mr. Scout. You know he graduated from Berea? Did I just make that up? I think he did. Crap. <laughs> okay, uh, check this out. Oh, it's almost time to go. Um, here they are, uh, opening up Japan. Um, um, that's the story. Um, we don't see a rise of feminism. Rock. Hey. Uh, yeah, they can, uh, do, do they not want to send it with the kid? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah, just tell them to bring it and leave it in front of for me. And, uh, just have them, uh, when they come that day, I'll... Gators. Bye. Hunter Ingram to the office. Hunter Ingram. So, I guess I should flip through the rest of the slides. Uh, it just gives some details about uh, what happens after uh, they become modern. So I'll go ahead and flip these through, and uh, you can pause them. These all come from Strayer, uh, first edition. So you can pause the screen and check out the slides. Um, go ahead and flip through the rest of these for you. Oh, Zaibatsus are a big deal. Um, these are government-run corporations. Um, uh, we see, like, females are treated really bad in Japan uh, due to this. Um, and then uh, this is sort of the story of... Uh, Japan is going to follow the West's lead. Uh, second period just walked in and they noticed I'm teaching to myself. That's how dedicated I am. Um, check out uh, railroad tracks, um, the factories, and all that good stuff here. Um, and uh, that's what we got. Remember to smash that unlock button, everybody. Uh, we'll see you very, very soon again on, uh, on MrBrock.net's uh, YouTube channel. And, uh, okay, love you, bye.